So hi guys, yes, <laughs> so much excitement happening here. We're standing here at the magnificent uh, Afri Ski Resort as you can see. It's been quite a big journey for so many teams, you know, for everybody it's been a big travel. The South African teams travelled in yesterday. It was a very long journey for them. Uh, there was a lot of, I think, nervous energy. They were tired. I think it just it was like for everybody a celebration of their fine year. And uh, I think when, when once that buses went up that big path, they really realised what's you know what's happening. This is the kingdom in the sky. Um, this is a massive race coming ahead. So yeah, I think reality is kicking in. You know, it's going to happen. In a race of about four five hundred kilometres, we have twenty checkpoints, and I think that is the, the trick behind making it you know, so varied and open for the teams that we don't have many checkpoints. So you have sometimes 30, 40 kilometers before you get the next one. That gives, opened up many, many route choices. And the teams then really have to think about how do they get the checkpoints. And that I think the less checkpoints we have, the more the teams should enjoy it, but the navigation definitely ups the level. This is an iconic part of Africa. It's remote, it's tough. I think the teams are going to be in for a massive um, surprise out there. I think there's a lot of people underestimate this country. And I think um, this is going to be a proper adventure, a proper expedition. I've literally not heard of the country before two weeks ago. So that makes it a bit more interesting. Um, I guess climate wise, it seems fairly similar to home. I mean, much higher altitude wise, and we're struggling a bit this morning just to move around. There are a few more uh, mountains than we have in Denmark. I think uh, our high highest point in Denmark is 160 meters. So uh, being here at 3000 meters is uh, kind of a difference. I think the altitude is what we've uh, been talking about a lot. And then the weather, it's, hard, it's been hard planning for uh, what kind of weather we're going to see. But actually the temperature right now is somewhat what we have in Denmark. Uh, maybe hope for some bit, uh, bit warmer weather in Africa, but... Uh. It's been two years, two and a half years since we did a ex big expedition race. So looking forward to being able to get out there and, you know, go through the highs and lows that you do and, and go into, the, just go into that, those dark places and come out on the other side. I think that's what we're looking forward to. And yeah, after two and a half years, it's going to be nice to be out doing long races again. Everybody's got a story and um, I don't think there's one person at this race who hasn't you know, experienced something over the last two years. And uh, this is our adventure racing bubble. And uh, we're all going into this world where we are so different from different countries and everything, but yeah, we are one family. This is the 10th edition of uh, Expedition Africa. Um, a lot of emotion rolling here. <laughs> um, yeah, we are still standing. It's a miracle. And um, for everybody, I say this year they're the lucky ones. Um, I think when everybody arrived, you know, all the hugs and kisses, everybody said they don't actually mind about what's coming for the race. They're just so happy to be here. Our prayers were heard. We have a sunny start. That's all we asked for. <laughs> Whatever happens from here, well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, the excitement is real. Seeing all the flags, the, the branding, the people, the sponsors. Uh, I'd, I'd say a bit of pressure too <laughs> to get a good start for, for the team. But at least we've got a fun activity for the start. And yeah, the donkey, uh, the donkey ride should be, should be good. We've got uh, lots of expertise here from, from deep, deep in the mountains. Um, our, our team member, Disema, is the uh, owner of many horses and donkeys, so we believe we've got, uh, we've got what it takes to, <laughs> to excel. We will give our best, but you never know here in the mountains and the weather and With the, the donkeys and the donkeys <laughs> and the deering, so. We'll take one stage at the time and we'll see. So, what he gonna do, uh, which is best today? He gonna carry the, the cases for the beer. 
then we gotta put the cases on Francis, then we put him. Uh, we have this uh, this thing here, we call it okay. We have Tleki in Sesotho, we call it Tleki. Then we put Tleki before we put the cases. Then we have the rope again, we're gonna tie the rope. Uh, we're gonna tie the cases with the ropes. So Francis is gonna carry all the heavy stuffs from what we're gonna put inside the, 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 the cases, like the bottles with, uh, with beer. We have everybody here. We want to thank everybody for welcoming us. Thank the local people from the Sutu. been amazing to be able to embark and have a go at these types of type of things because it's uh, it's not given away for free. I just went through wait I went through 10 11 maps just on this leg. It's just like piece to piece. It takes you 15 minutes just to piece the whole thing together. Um, now we got to go and try and put the whole puzzle piece together. Um, no, yeah, 214 k's. It's not going to be given away. It's going to be sticky. I think there's going to be a lot of mud, a lot of walking, a lot of pushing, clogged up wheels, but uh, everyone's got the same conditions, so we'll do the best we can with what we've got. So it's going to, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a long one. The second stage uh, was a biking, a uh, monster size bike. Usually uh, it's like, I don't know, more than Tour de France uh, do, do in a road bike, so we had to do it in uh, tough conditions in, uh, in a mountain bike. And uh, we were not very feeling very strong in the beginning, so uh, we went first out, but uh, soon the French team uh, passed us and uh, they were feeling a bit stronger on the mountains. We, we didn't know Lesotho at all. So it's a very good uh, uh, discovering and we appreciate a lot, yeah. After first section, the first section we were four teams very close and after we, were, we saw only the Estonian team uh, and it was, uh, we knew them on the other race so it was very, uh, uh, very interesting to, to, to pass them and that they pass us and uh, we were okay, progressing like that and sometimes one team will uh, have a choice uh, and the other another choice and then we come together so it was very, very funny. And 
yeah, the bike was long and, and also the issues with the mud because it had been raining in the night and uh, the, the mud was just in the right consistency to stick to the tires and uh, make the bike uh, very uh, slow and uh, heavy. From where we come in Estonia, our only option is to uh, ride head into headwind to get the mountain <laughs> in your legs. So uh, yeah, we needed to get used to it a little bit. And uh, yeah, the, the climbs were really big and you really struggle sometimes when you don't have power in your legs and you're not happy with how you're uh, moving. And when you climb these big hills, then of course the reward is the views. And uh, th that was just uh, jaw dropping at uh, some places that we visited. It was kind of tough, we didn't heal very well in the beginning, so Naturex passed us and we just kept going and and then a little bit recovered and catch them and so feel felt a bit better and somewhere maybe in the midnight or something kind of uh, uh, went separate ways and I don't know where they are at the moment so we must be pleased that we managed to get here. The, the bike leg is uh, very very long, the most difficult I never, I never do I think. Very long, a lot of elevation. Uh, we push the bike uh, all the time, so uh, so very very difficult. Kayaking is uh, like a monotonous thing that uh, you get sleepy if you don't have this uh, activity like the music. So we just kept going. And then we got to the last transition, uh, a little bit cold. And when the morning came, the water was calm and the sun brings the warmth. And, uh, and that became a very hot day for us. And we, yeah, we started out, swam across the uh, dam took the first CP and on the other side we saw that we have at least one and a half hours uh, advantage over the French. Uh, you see where the Estonians are? It's very different from uh, Europe when, where we live. Uh, uh, our lives are uh, very, what do you say, sterile uh, and uh, everything is uh, already worked out and comfortable. Here, uh, the people in countryside live in very primitive uh, conditions and uh, their life is uh, simple uh, and uh, they just uh, survive and maybe, maybe don't strive for uh, 
anything uh, bigger. So, and uh, why should they? Because it's uh, such a beautiful place, and uh, and uh, there is beauty in this uh, primitive life. We came from Sem Semang Kong. Semang Kong. Semang Kong. Ah, Semang Kong. Oh, you're from Semang Kong. By yeah. food. Yeah. yeah. Ah, guys, you're strong. Hi, 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 hi. Go, go, go. Hi, guys. From Semang Kong up to here. Hi. <laughs> We are mentally getting ready for a very tough uh, last uh, 10 kilometers because on the map there was no paths. And uh, in the reality, we um, just before we hit the canyon, we met one uh, guy, local guy, with a blanket, and uh, we asked him, Afriski, and uh, where to find the path. You, in, in these races, you always it's uh, good to ask the local people. The Lugla city is special, I mean, it, it obviously everybody knows it's called the Mountain Kingdom. I mean, these massive mountains, so that obviously changes everything. I mean, there's very few places in the world where you can traverse for up to six days, five, six hundred kilometers without actually any climbing over any fences. It's just, it's just incredible in that way. So the idea between the legs was we got three trekking legs is to make sure that we have a different look and feel to each of the, each of the legs. Three hiking legs in the, in the canyon, technical, following the main river, the mountain trek, vast open spaces, no, no um, any human structures, tricky navigation, and then the last one, the village trek, following basically the village line through the river. So all different, must have a different experience on the team. And then the mountain bike trek, you know, that type of distance over that elevation, taking for the back teams over two and a half days. And then the kayak leg, although it's on a dam, you got um, you got these many, many little um, they, um, little edges going into and people going the wrong way in the night. So I think all the legs are very challenging. This is one of the top teams in the world! Yes! 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 Your, your race is great. Bravo. We love your race. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm cold, I'm angry, I'm in the mountain, I'm lost. <laughs> Guys are our heroes. I mean, these are the guys who actually ultimately inspire us. You know, they push through. They show us and everybody at home what you know the the mind and the human body can do. And uh, I hope our family, the families, the friends, you know, everybody who's looking at this unique event, see that it is so hard adventure racing. You know, the weather came in, the conditions, they make mistakes, four people need to look after each other. You can't move on if, if one member is sick or suffering. It's just the ultimate sport. These guys who's coming in today, they've been on their knees. You know, and in what if, whatever form, you are really tapping deep into your soul and you're pushing through to get to that finishing line.
ever explain to anybody else what you have done. So yeah, we just want to rejoice life and rejoice business and you know, just have all our people having this experience that we're dreaming of. So yeah, be grateful. Thank you so much for everybody coming. Love from Africa.